Hey there and welcome, my name is Carlos Bernitz and let's start talking about what has been going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being directly sponsored by anyone mentioned here unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. Some links may be affiliate links, but then they don't cost you anything extra and they can benefit me a little bit. And all the links will be in the description together with some timestamps so that you can jump to the point of your preference. So. First, let's start talking about the Kickstarter campaign coming from RPG Latam, the Latin American tabletop RPG scene, that is Kalimba, which is an African-inspired game that makes extra clear to not be a reference for African lore and mythology. It is inspired by African uh, mythos, ideas, and everything from there. The game was already pretty acclaimed when it was released in Brazilian Portuguese, and now the Kickstarter campaign is aiming to make the game available in English. Thus, a broader audience. The art is more than top-notch, and we need more stories coming from the global south, and with this approach of taking something and not appropriating it, trying to actually make something that is responsible and that is actually making justice to it. Also from RPG Latam, we have Unseen Places by Armanda. It was made as a part of the Pocket Places jam that we mentioned last week, you can check out. It has six locations in an imaginary city with a map where everything is marked as well. We can then say that it puts together plenty of places that we see regularly, but we do not pay any attention to them. And it also had some instructions uh, on how to fold the zini, because since it is with the pocket places, it's the kind of mini zine format, so that you can just fold it. it, you do not need any cutting and everything, all the instructions are there. There is also coming this month from RPG Latam, Chase the Hollow by Brandon Leon Gambetta. This game is for three to five players from which one of them will be the narrator and it's supposed to be played in short around two hour sessions. In it, the players themselves, they portray some internet sleuth exploring an abandoned or hidden place. The players will then investigate and learn more about this strange place, uh, the identity, the entity that is there. Because, yeah, as everything, if they are exploring something that is hidden or abandoned, there is something terrifying there and strange. And they will try to know more about it and escape from it and hopefully all of them will make it alive. The characters, not the players. All players should be alive at the end of the game. And October Rust was also released this week. It is a game about personal fall for a greater thing. Also, for three to five players, being one of them, the game master, like the previous game that I mentioned, and it is supposed to be played as a one-shot in a kind of a heist kind of environment, where you are in a last stand in a rainy, grim, oppressive world. Also, a new idea, actually, something that is coming this weekend, is Big Bad Con is happening once again. It will be fully online and free to attend. However, I would urge anyone that has the means to help support it. You have plenty of options in how to help and support it monetarily and there are some amazing panels some of them from rpgc some of them from rpg latam you have a lot of representation there and a lot of very good talks so plan ahead so if you want to watch something because it will be this weekend it starts on saturday night for europeans late morning for us uh, west coast and so on so the late early afternoon for Brazil and most of Latin America, you have then a tough spot for people from uh, the Southeast Asia, but you get the, the grift with these ideas, you, you know already when it starts. On gems, the first that I want to mention here is Trouble Jam, the gem for Orbital Blues. Orbital Blues is uh, the Space Western game that was released by So Muppet, and on this jam, the idea is for designers and creators to come up with some troubles. A trouble in Orbital Blues is something that every character has, and it 
is what brings the characters to the blues, in a way. The gem also provides a description and some instructions on how to create the troubles so that even people that are not yet that deeply familiar with the game might that might want to participate, they can do so. They do not need to buy the game, learn everything about it and so on. I particularly think that it is a great game, but either way, you do not need to learn a whole new game to try and participate in it. You have up until November 21st to participate, so you still have some time, you have one month to figure out if you want to do something for it and not. I believe it, there is already a handful of entrances uh, of entries from like one day that is up so you can see that it's simple to make something for this gem another gem that i want to mention here and this one will be starting this weekend it is the scissor and glue tabletop gem i believe that it was put together by iku and here the idea is something very very different create a game using scissors and glue literally I mean, you do not need to use scissors and glue, glue but uh, this is the idea. Create the game as a craft and not in front of your computer, in a way. I mean, you can print the text, but all the layout, this layout needs to be done by crafting in the physical real world. Then scan it and submit it to the gem. I am quite intrigued by this one, and I think that a lot of people can make amazing things. You can use, as I mentioned, scissors and glue, but you also can try and use uh, ropes, you can use stickers, you can do a lot of different stuff, you can come up with a lot of creative ideas. So, check it out. And on threads and posts, as always, first, an interesting thread by Federico on encumbrance. But Encumbrance totally reimagined, not the way that you usually see it portrayed in the huge majority of games. So I do encourage you to read it and it might help you understand or have some ideas to create in your games or even how to interact with encumbrance in other games. It's something that it's worth thinking about. And there is also a post by Luke Gehring on how to make RPGs documents for free, but not on with the idea of layout or anything, documents, plain text, but something that will then be highly accessible. I suggest every creator to give it a look because it's not hard. It needs a little bit of coding, but not a lot. It's very easy to put together and it can make your content more accessible for a lot of people out there. Okay, for today, I believe that's it. If you like the video, like the damn video, share, subscribe. You know how internet works. Let me know in the comments what you are liking about the series, what you are disliking, the series, the episode. You can pay me a coffee on coffee. You can buy my games on itch.io and I will see you all in my next video. So, see ya!